What's up, guys? Welcome to episode two of the podcast series. My name is Gareth, and I help people with thoracic outlet syndrome and help them get better because I struggle with TOS, and it is a very difficult condition to get diagnosed, and it is very hard to live with. So people with TOS know the struggle. Others that don't have TOS think you're exaggerating, but you can actually lose your job. You can lose work. You can get put on disability due to lack of function in your arm. And that's exactly what happened to me. I couldn't work. I couldn't even leave the house. I didn't leave the house for four months at a time, literally not leaving at all. And that's how bad it got. You can't sleep at night. You're in pain constantly. And the doctors either don't know what TOS is or the doctors that do know what TOS is usually send you for surgery that ends up in more complications and more surgeries. And I've seen a lot of people have multiple surgeries and not fix the actual problem with their body. And uh, they just go down a road where they're struggling for years and years and they lose most of their life because they can't do anything. They, they get depressed because they're sitting at home. They've got no function of their arms. They're in pain constantly. They can develop fibromyalgia where they just in constant pain everywhere. So TOS, you need to know a lot of information about TOS. And there are a lot of basics that I want to cover and just help you get that knowledge to go to the doctor and have that knowledge. So when they're telling you to go have surgery, you can decide if you want to have that surgery or you can give them information of how you're feeling and help them better determine what to do for you. Because my situation was I went to the doctor and they were pushing for me to have the surgery and I was against it because it was so invasive and it just... Because they're dealing with the nerves in the brachial plexus and the arteries, it's a very risky surgery. But they don't tell you how risky it is until the doctor was showing me pictures and explaining to me that it is very dangerous. Anything could go wrong. So I went, studied further, and fixed my body, fixed my posture, fixed everything around my injury in my shoulder, and basically got myself functioning again because I had muscle wasting, I had a blue arm, no pulse, and fixed myself. And when I went back to the doctors, they couldn't believe that I managed to fix myself without having the surgery. So that's what got me into helping other people. And I've helped a lot of people around the world. And there are others that have a lot of pushback against what I'm doing and think that I don't know what I'm doing because they've experienced a different path and gone to the doctors and they've felt relief from the doctors. So... I'm not here to say that doctors aren't helping people. I'm just trying to help people get a lot more knowledge and raise awareness of TOS because people don't know enough about it and they have various symptoms which freak them out and they panic about it. And I see it every day on the groups. That's why I put my information on the groups and try to help people. Some people love it and they they listen to what I'm saying and they, they help themselves a lot more, especially if they do have the surgery. They, it also helps them because they can get their bodies working properly. And then there are others that are totally against what I'm saying and don't do anything, but those are the same individuals that are struggling on a daily basis and having more ops and more Botox injections and just not getting to where they were. Right now, I feel like I'm stronger than I was before my TOS, even though I struggled for about four years having TOS, but those last two years of really struggling, um, you don't realize how much you're struggling until it develops into something worse and worse and snowballs until it's out of control. You can't do anything. So you've got to look at yourself and you've got to look at what may have caused your thoracic outlet syndrome. Or you may have similar symptoms to thoracic outlet syndrome, like frozen shoulder or your diaphragm is not moving properly. That's what I had as well, where you're not getting enough air and my right side, my diaphragm was moving properly. Your diaphragm should expand your rib cage, but mine was stuck on the left hand side. So I was breathing, but my right lung was working way harder. And my left lung always, I always felt short of breath. And that was due to my rib cage and my wing scapula and all these symptoms. So the symptoms I think I'll do in episode number three because there are so many symptoms. And I'll explain how your body works on a kinetic chain and works its way down and you get develop more and more symptoms along the longer you have TOS or you could have other symptoms that lead into TOS. So thoracic outlet syndrome, there are basically three types of TOS. 
you've got neurogenic TOS, which is short, uh, NTOS for short, venous TOS, and arterial TOS. So ATOS, VTOS, and NTOS. Now, the most common one is neurogenic TOS, or NTOS, for short. And that's where your nerves are affected. So your nerve is compressed in the brachial plexus. Thoracic artery syndrome starts with the brachial plexus, everything getting compressed. So you basically have your top rib, you've got little grooves in the top rib, and your artery, your veins, your nerves sit over that top rib. And when that top rib starts lifting, it lifts into your collarbone or your clavicle. And that is what causes the compression. You've got everything running through over that top rib and it compresses against the clavicle, causing all the problems down your arm. So that's basically TOS in a nutshell. It's just the compression in the brachial plexus. But depending on the compression, you might have the nerve compressing more than the vein. You might have the artery compressing more than the nerve. Or you'll have a combination of all three or just two of them. So that's why getting a scan, going to a doctor, getting the scan, getting an ultrasound, x-ray, it can really help determine which TOS you have. And from there, you can decide what you want to do. Depending on how bad it is, you don't want it compressed so severely that you are cutting off the blood completely and you develop blood clots. Um, that's what the ultrasound will determine, and you can discuss that with the doctor. But if you can sort it out before you get that, then you're going to have a much easier time and can avoid surgery. The next thing is a cervical rib, which is an extra rib, and that sits above the top rib, and not many people have it. It's a small percentage of people, but some people have one extra rib, some people have a cervical rib on both sides, and that more than likely will need an operation to cut that out because that's an, an unnatural rib pushing and causing a lot more pressure. So there are people that have cervical ribs that don't even know it, and they live symptom-free, and then there are others that develop TOS symptoms and then they go for an x-ray and realize they've got two extra ribs or one extra rib and uh, that's just causes a whole bunch more compression. So there are all these different factors but that's basically what it is and that can develop into different things and you can have various symptoms. What happened to me was I woke up one day with a blue arm. I had no blood flow. When I went to the doctor there was no pulse. They couldn't find a pulse. It was so severely compressed that there was no pulse in my hand and it was blue and it had this numb feeling like I could touch it anywhere and it was numb but it was in so much pain and it had a heaviness and tingling like a funny tingling and spasming and eventually I started losing muscle in the arm because there's a lot of atrophy that comes with lack of blood flow and just pain and just a heaviness that you can't explain it's like you you've got no energy to lift your arm it's so sore shooting into your armpit into your neck i always explain tos as having a sword right down like through my brachial plexus coming out my shoulder my armpit and my shoulder like that's what it feels like it's the severe pain it feels like something's in your body that shouldn't be there because of the compression that you've got this sword running through right through your neck under your arm because you've got that pain you've got that compression heaviness weakness and it's just it's horrible and you literally can get put on disability because you cannot function. Now, when I was at home for those four months, I couldn't breathe properly because my diaphragm wasn't working properly. I was in so much pain. I was going to different specialists and going from doctor to doctor to try to get answers. And it was just a nightmare. I, could, I literally couldn't do anything. I loved drawing. I couldn't draw. I couldn't hold a pencil because my, my hand would cramp up and I was losing so much muscle. My hand looked skinny. I lost all this muscle in my hand. And it's just, it's so depressing because you don't know what's going on with you. Even when you get diagnosed, you know what you have, but you don't know how to fix it. And the doctors are telling you, you need to go for surgery. And it just, it, it throws you into a hole where eventually you feel so alone and isolated that nobody understands what you're going through. And you're in so much pain that you literally don't know what to do anymore. So I was phoning around the world. I was trying to find videos. I was trying to find anything that could help me and try to find people that also had thoracic outlet syndrome and it was very difficult i thought that i'd find a lot more information much easier and i would phone doctors around the world and i i, I wouldn't get a call back and i would find a little bit of information but it wasn't exactly what i was experiencing and wasn't the type of tos that i felt that i had 
And it was all these things that I just felt so lost. So I went to the doctor. They diagnosed me with VTOS. I had a slight ATOS and NTOS. I had all three. But it was the way that the doctors handled it that I didn't feel comfortable. They want, they, they booked me in, wanted to take my top rib out. Then they showed me how invasive it was through the armpit. And there are different ways that the doctors take the top rib out, the first rib resection. But the way they had to go through me was through my armpit due to all the muscle around the front. And I just wasn't comfortable with it. So they said the first step was going for an angiogram. Now an angiogram is where they put, they go through your groin, they put dye into your body and they can see where the compressions are. But uh, doing research and what the doctor told me when I went into the, to the doctor's room, he said to me that the patient the day before nearly bled out because they go through the artery in your groin and they cut a little bit too much and the patient nearly died on the table. So that didn't make me feel comfortable at all. I mean, you're going, you must go for that the next day and then he's telling you this and he's one of the best in the country. So I didn't feel comfortable with that to start with. And then researching on the dye that they use, the dye can also cause complications. So you need to research that as well. Um, I've got a short list here of angiogram dye and there are people protesting against it because it causes so many other complications like fibromyalgia, and uh, there are rare symptoms like heart attack, stroke, irregular breathing, irregular heart rhythms, allergic reaction, kidney damage, excessive bleeding, and infection. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to get all these things having an angiogram, but there are a lot of other problems linked to it. If you don't have these severe problems, you might have a tingling or pain through your body that you can't explain, and that has been linked to the dye that they use. So find out what dye they're using. And just know the facts, know what you're getting into. There's a lot of people that go for angiogram that don't have surgery, but then they're having all these other problems that are linked to the dye because they had that initial angiogram scan. So it's very difficult and very complicated because some of these things you do need to go for, but the more information you have, the better choices you can make. Because if you're going there blind and the doctor chooses to use something that you might be allergic to or anything could happen, and then you have other complications where you didn't have to have those complications. So I didn't even go for the angiogram. Um, I went for the ultrasound to check how badly compressed the compression was. And I worked from there, studied further, got my knowledge about TOS up and uh, helped myself. So what you have to do as well is research and think about past injuries that you may have had because that plays a huge factor. When you look back, there are things that you do on a daily basis. There are things that might have happened to you, like accidents, that lead up to TOS. And you might have been experiencing symptoms long before the main thoracic artery syndrome sy symptoms. So for me, I've had plenty of accidents in my life, <laughs> broken bones. And just before I started having like really bad TOS, uh, we had a, a car driving to the back of us here at my complex. And that was pretty hard. And I think I got a bit of whiplash, but didn't take much note of it. But I did have a, a sore neck and a sore arm. And from there, started feeling things a lot worse. But before that, I would work and I'd be using a knife to cut the graphics that we were doing. And the knife would fall out my hand. Like simple things like that, like... On a daily basis, the knife falls out once or twice, and it just builds up to eventually you, you, you can feel that you're considerably weaker. So if I look back, I was probably having a slight compression already, losing a bit of strength in my arm, um, not feeling as much so the knife would slip out, and it just built up further and further and further until one day I had no strength, no strength, no grip, and everything was severely compressed. Also, my posture was very bad. I'd always sit hunched forward. I'd always be leaning in my car. And all of those things led up to all the muscle problems that I eventually found out. So I had a wing scapula. My quadratus lumborum was shorter. That's the muscle in the back that gets really tight when you've got TOS. And that's what I'll explain in the next series, the psoas muscle and all those muscles down the side of your body 
when you're leaning to one side, they get shorter and the opposite side gets longer. So when you're walking, you may not have the best posture and lean a bit more this way. When you want to lean this way, you're tight. So you don't really lean that way and everything compensates. So when you've got TOS, you're not really moving this arm too much because it's sore. Plus you're leaning. The one side of your body starts getting affected like crazy and you're getting lower back pain and hamstring pain and foot pain and all these different pains and dizziness. And I was having anxiety attacks on top of it, panic attacks, like proper panic attacks where I got rushed to the ER a few times. And the way I felt was like they were going to jab my heart with adrenaline to save my life because I was dying right there. That's what proper anxiety is. Not when you watch on TV and they're like, oh, I've got a bit of anxiety. People that don't have anxiety don't realize how severe anxiety can be. Anxiety is like being in a war zone and you've got guns pointed towards your head and you know you're about to get shot. And that fear in your body and you're shaking and you can't breathe and your heart is going at like 160 beats a minute while you're sitting on the couch in the calmest environment. You've got this war in your head and you literally physically feel like you're dying, like your heart is going to explode because it, it, it feels like it's skipping a beat and, and racing at the same time and you can't breathe fast enough. I would end up on the floor just looking at the ceiling, not it being, being able to speak even because it was such a mission just to get a breath out. So that's what proper anxiety and panic attacks is, where I was having five of those a day, having my TOS pain, and it was just a cycle that I couldn't get out of. It was stressing me out, not being able to do anything, not being able to get out the house, not being able to fix myself. So I know what it feels like. I know that that feeling of being alone when you're experiencing that panic attack and when you're struggling with the pain in your arm and not knowing what to do. So that's why I say just get the information you need. Figure out which TOS you have. Figure out what route you should take. Go for the scans. Go for the ultrasounds because those are not invasive. Um, that's the best way to check the, the blood flow and the compression. And from there, you can watch my other videos where I'm doing trigger point therapy, where I'm doing certain stretches. Now, it took me a very long time. It took me ages to get right. I'm not saying it's a quick fix, but it's a long-term fix. I can do things now. I can lift weights again, where most people that have had surgeries can't lift weights. Even people that are still struggling with TOS, weight training is one of the worst things you can do. And that's my mistake that set me back further. I managed to get myself to a point where I felt okay and strong enough to go back to the gym. And when I started lifting weights, that it just everything compressed again and I was even worse than when I started. So it was building up all the way from the bottom again, sitting on the couch, feeling horrible. And uh, yeah, you just got to take it slow. Like most of my videos, I, I can't stress that enough. You have to take day by day, very slowly. A lot of videos I'll post and things that I did with maybe resistance bands just to open up my chest and get my scapula in a more neutral position and get my neck in a neutral position because you get that forward head that affects C6 and C7 in your spine and you need to get that pressure off your neck and just open your brachial plexus a bit and doing chin tucks and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Doing that on a daily basis starts getting your body more aligned and then people will, will try it and then they may feel... You get two types of people. You get people that will try the exercise and they feel a lot better. And then a few minutes later, they won't feel good anymore and then they'll stop and they'll never do it again. And then you get other people that will try the exercise and then they can feel the, the, the benefits. They feel so good that they do it for the rest of the day. They're just busy doing the exercise over and over and over. But now your body's so weak because you you got the muscle atrophy, your body hasn't been functioning properly. So now you've been sitting on the couch, you haven't been doing much. Now suddenly you're going into like a full day of training and squeezing and chin tucks that you wake up the next day and you're so flared up, your scalene muscles are inflamed and pulling and your rib is pulling so tight that you feel like, oh, what I did yesterday definitely doesn't work. It's not that it doesn't work, it's that you did so much of it. So how I did it, I do a few shoulder blade squeezes, sit back, get my posture right, do a chin tuck, get everything aligned, hold it for a few minutes and do that just a few times a day and then build myself up. Maybe sometimes I'd wake up and I'd feel worse 
and then I do less the next day or I'd skip a day, do it the next day. And week by week, I just do a little bit more than I did the last week, a little bit more, add maybe one or two things in till eventually I could do that. Then I could do some more stretches in the door frame and open up my chest and get deep tissue massage to loosen up the pec minor because the pec minor affects every one of us without realizing it. If you stand in a door frame and lift your arm like this and push on you, feel how tight it is. Maybe turn, turn to the one side and open it up a bit more and feel how tight it feels in your pec minor. It's just underneath. So if you push from the side, you can feel it on your ribs because they attach to three of your ribs. And you can just feel that our lifestyles of sitting forward at a desk like this and having that rounded shoulder look and our heads forward the whole time that when you want to open up, you're so tight that it affects you so badly. So this is just a simple explanation of what TOS is, the different types of TOS, and simple things that you can do to get yourself better. But in the next episodes coming up, I'm going to explain the different symptoms. I'm going to go through the whole variety of symptoms because there are a lot. And people experience TOS in different ways as well. It's not just one clear-cut diagnosis and one clear-cut symptom that you feel and everyone feels the same. Everyone feels things differently. You could have a compression and you, some people even uh, lose vision in the one eye due to the compression and lack of blood flow. So it can get very scary and people are affected way worse than others. But I've helped so many people from the worst to people that have mild frozen shoulder or mild TOS where they've just developed it, just felt the symptoms and they start doing the stretches and exercises very subtly and uh, they start feeling a lot, a lot better there isn't enough information out there and the limited information that is out there is all pushing for for surgery and there are other options like a lot of these doctors won't send you for physical therapy first or they'll send you to the wrong physical therapist that is doing too much if you don't have somebody that has been through TOS then I don't think they understand it 100% you can study something but if you haven't been through it yourself you won't fully understand the extent of what it feels like so that's why I'm trying to help more people and hopefully this can help you. And uh, in the next series, we're going to we're gonna go through a whole bunch of things that you can do, a whole bunch of things that you can't do. And we're going to help a lot more people, I think. So I will see you guys in episode number three. I hope this helps. If it does, or if you know somebody that has TOS or you think has something along these lines, share it to them because like I said before, I can only share it to the people that I know and uh, people that have subscribed so if you haven't subscribed subscribe so you can find me easier and and get the the updates uh, you can turn on the bell to get the notifications or refer people to to listen to this or watch this on youtube because i don't think there is enough information about tos out there and not maybe not the right information there's good information but maybe just not enough to help people more naturally to help get their bodies in a more natural alignment because also if your body say you've got wing wing scapula where your scapula sits away from your body and your diaphragm isn't moving like me and then you go for the surgery you release the compression but you still have those issues so you might not have the compression but because you've got that wing scapula and your shoulders pushing forward that muscle is going to grow and shorten again and you're going to get scar tissue in that area and you're going to feel like you're so tight in your pec minor because everything's pulling again. Even though you've had the surgery, you're going to feel tight and the compression is going to come back. So if you can fix all the areas around your TOS or around any injury you may have, it works for any injury. If you could work around it, then when you do actually get that injury fixed or you get those muscles sorted around it, sometimes those help pull your muscle into alignment, pull your body into alignment so that you're sitting more neutral, your spine's neutral, your neck isn't pulling forward and putting way more pressure on the muscles. Just simple things. So um, I will see you guys soon and hopefully this can help. Cheers.